Who is Greta Gerwig? That's me. That's you. That's me. <laughs> oh God. If Anna Karina was the face of the French New Wave, Greta Gerwig is the heart of mumblecore. This DIY film movement has been praised and banned since it came about in the early 2000s. It's a classic case of be careful what you name your film movement. Mumblecore is simply a broad term that became attached to an ensemble of enthusiastic young filmmakers working with small budgets and an even smaller capacity to enunciate. I just didn't, I just didn't know we can affect people in certain ways. Like, I don't want to use you. I don't, I'm right. I don't know. You like, you like, like, I might... I Time has proven there was plenty of talent behind the camera. Joe Swanberg, Henry Bajowski, the Blast Brothers and the Safties. Yeah, cool. But it was Greta Gerwig's performances that brought Mumblecore into the limelight. Uh -huh. Now, those days are long gone. Since directing Lady Bird in 2016, Gerwig hasn't shown her face in front of the camera. And while so far her directorial efforts have been superb, I fear we might be losing one of the best screen performers of the 21st century. Greta Gerwig is the most original actor of her generation, the most transformative film performer of the last decade. Yet the full extent of her inventiveness is only revealed in films where the director creates and sustains a narrative framework that's open to Gerwig's and the other actors' spontaneous inspirations. That was New Yorker critic Richard Brody describing her role in Yeast. Well, if you don't want to be fun about it... In Yeast, she's loud. Very loud and brash and impetuous. She has the energy of a new puppy who's just gotten free from its lead. But that's just one side of Greta. Gerwig has displayed an amazing range. She can be manic, hyper-energetic or morose. When she wants, she can be a pillar of strength. And she also does a great Owen Wilson impression. Wow. No one is passive-aggressive quite like she can be, and she has a certain unique flavor of kind condescension. Oh, I know. You think I'm suicidal, that I'm gonna kill myself and make you look bad. No, I'm worried that you'll kill yourself and make yourself look bad. But when I think of her acting style, I think of this. Her defining trait is still her capacity to be awkward. Not just awkward, but she's able to act out the broadest spectrum of awkwardness I've ever seen an actor perform. There's a clumsiness about her movement. It's as if mind and body are slightly disconnected, putting the body in the awkward position of having to apologize for the movement the brain ordered. She has played a vast array of characters, yet for all her obvious grace, that mind-body disconnect seemed to always be there. She brought the same physical awkwardness to the role of Florence. For Florence, every action needs a ramp-up. In another scene, she looks at her friends before gaining courage to wave at her love interest. This happens over and over. It's as if she's in a permanent state of mid-wave. Yeah. You know when someone waves at you and you wave back, but then realize they're waving at someone else? Weird. Yeah, I know. Well, there's a split second where you have to decide what to do. Gerwig seems to permanently exist in that space. I actually tried looking you up on Facebook once. Oh yeah? Why? must have something to do with how she was raised as an actor. There was so much improvisation going around that Gerwig would often have to say a line. It's, it's like so exciting and it's like this person and this person, it's so much fun and then it just like... Before coming up with the next. One by one they sort of become like real and problematic and people get hurt and... Um, she learned to get comfortable with those in-between moments. Instead of a line following another line, this looks a lot like someone who's contemplating what to say and making a decision. I, 
I'm... I'm sorry. There's almost a punctuation mark between two thoughts, a little comma. I'm... I'm sorry. Um... I'm, I'm really sorry. When I think of why Gerwig's acting has resonated so much with my generation, aka older millennials, I remember that no words seem more natural coming out of her mouth than I just don't know what I'm doing with my life. When she was younger, she was the perfect encapsulation of youth and its insecurities. You're not that young, 10, 10 to 12 years younger, we're contemporaries, okay? In her later roles, she found a way to use those insecurities to prop up her adult characters, like a house of cards of vulnerability and self-doubt. Things that, as newly minted adults, we try to mask or clean out of our systems, before eventually realizing some of it is part of who we are and that in some ways we need to accept them. I think I'm sick, and I don't know if my ailment has a name. It's just me sitting and staring at the internet or the television for long periods of time interspersed by trying to not do that and then lying about what I've been doing. When I watch her performances I'm terrified that House of Cards will fall down and crumble under the weight of adulthood. But that makes it all the more powerful when they make it through. When Maggie or Brooke or Francis eventually figure it out. <laughs> 